This is me. I'm David Navarro, David Navarro, Executive Creative Director at Bueno New York. And for those who don't know what Bueno is, Bueno is a design agency. And this is us last uh, summer in upstate New York, where the whole company gathered together from the offices from New York, San Francisco, LA, and Reykjavik to have a week of fun and put in silly faces. And this is our work. So we've done quite a few things for the big brands that you can recognize and as well some small clients. And one thing is happening, like in, in the next three months, that we are turning five. And five years like seems like nothing, at the same time seems like a lot. And it's one of those moments, those milestones, that you start thinking and looking back and looking at the world that you have in the screen and seeing if, if you're really evolving or you're like kind of trapped in a weird comfort zone and starting to repeat yourself. Because it's something that you live in the world, like the world is kind of like predictable and led by, by repetition and everything kind of looks the same. And I'm not talking only about design, for instance, how many superhero movies we need, because every year they release like seven or eight of them. They, just like they found the formula to just milk our wallets. Or if I'm thinking in creativity, something like this, like the, the, Bansky, the banking stand. So it feels like we're looking for instant gratification and we think something that is, okay, this is the news, let's create something. And the day after you have like all the brands doing shit like this. And, and it's kind of like we're following the, the Instagram stories pattern, reproduce something and that's to be consumed and forgotten. And that brings me to, to the hot dog factory. I know this is pretty disgusting. I was inspired by the <laughs> art direction of the awards conference actually. And, and this is actually what a metaphor of what we are doing today in, in, in our lives. We are consuming and, and producing content like this, like, like, a, like a chain, like a factory repetition. And that weirdly brings me to Bueno. I'm gonna explain you the connection. So one thing that we do at Bueno is that we commission art for different illustrators to create some fantastic art pieces to be part of our, uh, our universe of, of the brand. And this one especially we like from Guillaume Courdijan because this has this, this little guy. The hot dog. And, and we like it that much that we adopted it as a, as a mascot. That way you can see it in our 404 page, Escaping from Chaos. <laughs> it's actually the first thing that we give to our, our bueno people when they join the company. We give them the pin that makes them like embrace the hot dog. But what I like of this hot dog is basically this, that is running. That is kind of like escaping from, from somewhere or someone or from that hot dog factory. And, and this is like a hidden message for us. It's like you have to, to escape, escape from, from yourself, escape from the convention, escape from the norm, because you want to embrace the future. Because yes, the future is scary. I remember a conversation I had with Halley, the founder of, of, of Bueno, he was here with, with his daughter Emma, when, when he tried to hire me after I, I said no to him like three times, I said, okay, Halley, yeah, you want to hire me, but I want to know something. What do you want to do? So what's the future of Bueno? Because one thing is, is real, we cannot design websites forever. And he told me this. It's kind of like, uh, sounds stupid, but this in a way defines the level of ambition. It's not about like, just like, okay, I'm stupid, I'm thinking I want to design a skyscraper. I think this is like the, the type of attitude that is, is like reflected in that little hot dog. It's about like, we need to run, we need to keep moving forward. And that's like the, the title of the talk. I just tweaked it a bit, it's like the escape from the hot dog factory. And it's a crazy journey to design a, a skyscraper. It's a talk about challenging the convention, challenging yourself, and challenging the comfort. Let's start with this. So Skype the, the guidebook, challenging the context. Yeah, this is true, all the websites look the same. I read an article the other day on, on Medium that was saying that, and this classic tweet from John Gold, and, and, and it's true, and I'm a flash boy. I, I grew up like uh, coding action script websites and was the best like time in the world. I'm really sorry for the new generations because it was like a beautiful moment of, of, of <laughs> chaos. But right now we're in the present and I think that's okay. That everything looks the same because innovation is not gonna happen because you want to create and you can want to change things. Innovation happens just like a step by step. And perhaps like the, the trick is just like doing the same things, but slightly different, pushing it a bit. 
And I want to talk about Reuters. Reuters is a client that is with, with Weno from, I think, 2014, from the very beginning. And Reuters is like an international news agency that is, like, they, they were founded in, in the 19th century, so they've been here for a while, just like being an authority in news. And we work with them creating the, the Reuters TV app, it's an app that you put in your smart TV. And the, the premise was pretty simple. So you have the, the classic flavor of the TV show, the TV news show, with the presenters, like they have like the structure content, like half an hour or one hour with sections, and you have to like wait until you have the information that you want. And then you have the, cla the, the modern way of consuming news. You have the YouTube and the Netflix, like where it's like that instant gratification, I want it now. And then what we did was, okay, we can innovate, we can do something crazy, or we can just, just follow the guidebook and create the next YouTube. So you have like all the content that, and you can just tap and select the content. No, and what we did was, let's keep the heritage of Reuters, let's keep the legacy, and let's bring the flavor of the classic. So that's why what we did was, okay, let's create an experience that is about consuming news, like the classic way, and then we pair it with a new way that is just like helping people to say, okay, you have the time, you have three minutes, you have four minutes, you have 30 minutes, choose what, what you want, and then we're gonna create the experience for you. And then when we face the new challenge, that is redesigning the, the, this app, the new, the Reuters news app, so we started with this, like the classic approach to create a, a news app, like a structure like a newspaper, the classic. So we had the, to, to pair it as well with the way people are consuming news today. And this is some, some stats. I'm gonna go like the marketing way. So a 68% of, of the, the users are consuming news through social media. This is, this is basically three out of four people are consuming news through these platforms. And you have the Facebooks and you have the the YouTubes and the Twitters and the rest. And, and the funny thing is that these people are not expecting those news to be real. And, and this is kind of like fake news stuff. But this pairs nicely with Reuters because they are just the opposite. They are trustworthiness. It's about like the, like the proper news. So then when we have to create this app, the, the brief was pretty simple. Let's create a personalized and customizable experience for the way people are consuming news today. So we have the same dichotomy, let's embrace the classic, let's embrace it with the new. And then, this is basically the, the direction we took. Everything is a remix. You don't have to innovate, like creating something crazy, but as you have to pick the elements that are making the experience like, like memorable. And then we embrace the classic. We provide a framework that respect the creator, like the legacy of Reuters new. So everybody consumes feeds nowadays. Like you can see it in social media, everything is like feed based. So we created the toolkit for the editors to create the content, the way they are creating content from the amazing editorial photos they have, the videos, the, the, the premium articles they create, everything that was part of that feed. And then we gave them the control of the feed. So from the classic approach, you have the homepage and you, have, you can tailor the experience for your users with classics like the afternoon edition or the evening edition or the morning edition and then you have the classic approach with all the sections that you have to at your, at your disposal for them, and then we created that module that was like bringing the, the, the news that they were considering uh, useful for the users at that time. And then you have to pair it with the current. You have to find an experience that understands how people consume news nowadays. So this is pretty basic. You have the onboarding, you have this cool animation because you're gonna be diving in the world of news, and then you create like the first layer level of personalization. That is the classic sections, but as well those sections that can be current at that moment. And the remix time starts. So it's a moment where you have to challenge like the, the convention, challenge like guidebook, and you're thinking, are we gonna create something crazy or are we gonna innovate using the patterns that are already work? Because you can innovate and you can try to do something, but time is pressure, money is precious, and you have to be pretty accurate. What we did was just like, let's make a remix of the social media things that are working. Starting with AR power feeds. You have the classic sections, but at the same time you have other sections that are basically keywords. Long story short, like Reuters has like a AI platform that is gathering all the news and they are like cataloging the news, adding hashtags. So we provide the, to the user the ability to select those hashtags, to be laser focused with the thing that they, they really want. It was like not only like following those classic sections, but as well, all those things are important. For instance, I'm Spanish. Trap immigration is one of the topics that is pretty interesting for me. So 
this type of laser focused approach or the classic and annoying news feed. So we are inspired by Twitter or LinkedIn. So we have this in the feed because people are consuming the feed. They are scrolling like never ending scroll. And then you have these, these elements that are just boosting the experience and bringing the editors and bringing everything that Reuters can provide or the classic discovery inspired by Instagram. So it was about remixing all these, all these elements from social media and bringing it to the new world. And the remix world, like they increased the user retention by a 50%. So it was pretty, pretty amazing. So the takeaway of this, of this section is that it's okay to innovate just that way. It's not about like going crazy. It's about like picking the things that are interesting and relevant and then bring it in a new context. And then you can just like start like pushing and pushing and pushing the, the industry in a way. But if you push too much, sometimes you have to escape yourself and escape the ego. And and I'm going to tell you a story. It's like a kind of like a story of a bit dramatic, actually. So we like to work with big brands. It's great to work for the, the Googles and the Facebook, but there are well, the small brands. And the small brands are great, basically because they come with, with like a big dreams and big ambitions and small budgets. And those products are the ones that I really like. And this is one of those cases, the case of Cowboy. Cowboy is a, an electric bike from a startup from Brussels, and they came to Bueno with this bike and a name. And <coughs> they were trying to, in, in, that, in that moment, we were trying to get the funding for the project. And then we held them with, with, the, with the branding. So what I like of these projects is that they come with, with what we call like strong relationships. We are in this together. It's our, one of our, our core values. So they, they came with the, with the product to Bueno. And it was like something fantastic. And we started the relationship pretty, pretty amazingly. But there was thing that we really, we really hated. What we really hated was the name, Cowboy. Because it didn't feel like modern. It didn't feel like something that, that you can really tap into, into the culture. Because you have the, the archetype of the, of, the, of the cowboy, you know, like the Marlboro Man, the Charlton Heston laughing, the outlaw, the bandit. And, and we really hated it. But the client was really attached to it. There's nothing that we could do to, to change their mind because they were in love with the other side, like the freedom, the, the, the just riding past with your horse. And then that was our, our intention. Okay, we hate the name. We like that. Let's go all in with, the, with that like, sense of freedom. And then after the strategy, we came up with the word like cowboy and reasonable freedom that was reflecting the way you are like riding in the city, trying to, to ignite the... the like a pleasant journey in your, in your city when you're riding. So this was about like uh, following your gut and, and not your ego because we really follow our guts and we try to push the client too much in a direction, trying to avoid everything that was like related to the Wild West. And we went all in with the idea of the freedom. And I'm going to show you some of the, the explorations that we made. And this is what we presented. We started with the was trying to pair it with the product. We pair it with the product. We, this is like actually the shape of, of that bike. And, and the client really immediately hated it because it was too cold, impersonal. Like our product is not, not known, so nobody's going to give a fuck about that. So OK, let's move forward. And we started with, let's bring the context. Actually, we really like this idea because this is going to be an urban bike. So let's bring the context of the city. And then we can just like trace like some like rides that you can take in the city and we can create it in a nice, nice layout. But the client said, okay, yeah, I like it, but it looks too technical. Actually, it's because you're explaining it because I don't get it. And, and actually, I don't think it's going to work. And then we went in a third direction. That was the emotional one. That was like that one that was bringing the, the attitude that they wanted to bring to the, to the bike, that sense of freedom. Because it was like that flow, that, that dynamic of the, of the blue element that is creating that that empty space that was defining that dynamic. And we fell in love because, okay, this is one thing that we can do. We can stretch it. And we can create the most beautiful design system ever. And, and this is the moment that, <laughs> where everything was kind of like, <laughs> because, yeah, this is us and this is the client. Basically, it's, trust me. We know what we're doing. This is going to be amazing. And we have to, to make this thing awesome. And it's when things went, went south. We started to try to, okay, let's bring this dynamic into the logo. 
we we'll try to start explore. Okay, this is the logo. This is going to be the, the, the right angle. This is going to be interesting to that bring this dynamic. Can we just go further and we can create some like a design system? And you can see that we were like going far and far and far from freedom, going far from something that you can digest was simply like complex. And every iteration was kind of like a art piece that we were making, but nothing was bringing a brand to life. Everything was more chaotic and chaotic. Even we started to get crazy, started to write weird copy. And let's say, okay, let's bring, let's, bring, let's bring some of the images in the bike and perhaps we can find the solution. And we created this that actually I look at the list now and looks like a real estate company that is pretty popular here in New York. And we even created like a, a prototype because we wanted to use like a, like a dynamic uh, system to create posters and all that. So we're pretty deep in trying to push the client and push everything. Okay, let's, let's add the mashup. Let's create everything together. Typography. Let's bring that. Let's write like amazing copy. Uh, amazing, yeah. <laughs> and then we were pushing so fast, so far. Like the client was trying to get nervous. My design team was starting to get like pretty, pretty annoyed with me. And it's when you realize that, that reality is punching you in the face. And actually, literally, this is me. And, and, and by the way, this, this, this quote from Mike Tyson, they, these guys of Cowboy, I went to, to, the, to the Brussels office like a couple of weeks ago, and they have that quote in the, in the wall. I don't know if this means that a hidden message for me or something. Because it was a moment that you have, okay, revelation. And it's when you, when you stop and you realize that you're being egotistical and this is not working. And it's one, one thing that I say all the time at Bueno, common sense always wins. It's, about, it's not about pushing like crazy. And it's when, it wasn't nothing wrong in this project to embrace a bit of cowboyness. It's where we came up with the idea of the spur. You know, the spur, the spur is what the cowboys have in the boot to activate the horse. And at the same time, it's the same thing that users of a bike, they have the feet to ignite the bike. It was kind of like a nice analogy. And everything started to flow with this. So, once the client said, okay, there's something that we can feel is, is part of our territory, a cowboy. And we started to iterate different versions of the, of the, of the spur, the logo. It is like some of them, we, I think we iterated around 150 or 200 versions of this. It was pretty intense. But then everything came along with this, the logo. That actually, that spur is kind of like inspired by the gears of, of the bike. And it was the moment where you're putting this in the context of the bike. We fell in love with the bike. This was going, oh, okay, this is working. In every single piece, you were seeing that the, the, the brand wasn't loud. The brand wasn't something that was screaming, cowboy, cowboy, cowboy. We are the, the Charlton Heston laughing. And everything was kind of perfect, but we were missing something. We were missing that, that part of the strategy, the freedom. And then that's why when we were like, selecting the colors, we, we chose pink. On one hand, it was the favorite color of the client, so that was an easy sell. But it was bringing that playfulness, that energy, that, that the, with the contrast with the bike was something that was bringing that uniqueness and of course was balancing the negative connotations of the word cowboy. And then we started to place it in playful environments, pink cactus, wooden cities. That neon sign didn't make it to the end, but I wanted to share it with you. <laughs> uh, and this was the, the, the tagline, right to freedom, that encapsulated the both things, like the freedom from the strategy and ride, as you're riding the, your, new, your new horse. And then this is part of the, the art direction that we created, some, some mock-ups. And when we started to, to, to make this experience, we, we went product-centric. This is the first time that you're going to launch a, a new product in the market. So we tried to use the element and use like, the touch of pink to bring the accent in different places. We added a bit of cowboyness with the copy, trying to not scream too much and not go in too crazy again with the, the cowboy idea. We added the layers of design and we added the magic with animations to bring it in the right place. And then you can see it here, like some, some examples. So it wasn't about like pushing, pushing too hard. It was kind of like stopping, breathing, and trying to find the right solution. We also designed the, the app. I'm showing this, but this is already outdated because we finished like a couple of weeks ago the design of the new app because these guys are killing it in, in Europe. They are selling a lot and they, they are gonna expand to, to new markets in the next year, so I'm pretty happy about it. And I'm really happy to see how they are really understanding the, the brand, understanding what we created together, because this was a stream collaboration. This wasn't like us, of course it was us like trying to push too much, but they were patient enough. And it's super gratifying to see what Adrian, the guy there, 
wrote when I asked him to, to, to write a quote for our case study because it's a reflection of, of understanding that now we work as one and, and, and this is key to many aspects of projects. So we like read that it's important to push in, in, in a world of sameness. It's important to do that without ego. But it's just important to, to escape from yourself as a group. And I'm gonna talk about culture. And culture is super important for us. It's kind of like the way you're gonna like push to, to make things happen, to make this change. And, and you guys that have studios, you have to have a strong culture for that. So we have six values. I'm not gonna talk about that because early this year, uh, Hali spoke about this in, in, in San Francisco in the World's Conference, so the video is out there. I recommend you to, to watch it. And for us, the culture, the culture is a connector. It's the only, the only moment that I'm gonna say something good about sameness. Because one of the things that, that is like, kind of like a signature from, from, from Bueno is that all the offices look the same. Of course, like different layouts, but the furniture is the same, the, the chairs are the same, the art is the same, everything is the same, even the coffee machines are the same. Why? Because we collaborate like quite frequently, like people from New York are going to San Francisco, or San Francisco to New York, or Reykjavik, and, and, and it's key to bring that familiarity that is gonna help us to, okay, we are in, in, in that like, safe space that we create the best work of our lives. But at the same time, culture should be an enabler. That is just like not only looking to the, to the inside, but looking to the outside. So that's why we are like, pretty active, trying to do like, events and trying to do a lot of stuff, because we want to be inspired by people. That's why we have uh, one event. There's a lot of creativity out there. So we invite people that we are just jealous and the, the work that they are creating and we invite them. But at the same time, we are committed with the, the things that, that really matter. And we have bueno.co, where we are having initiatives to, to help people like uh, parent, parenthood, women in code, or even helping kids that are being taken away from their parents. And we have an, have an opinion too. <laughs> this is a, a real billboard that we put in San Francisco. But I know, I know one thing, because I always, every time that I'm hearing a, a talk, someone talking about culture, I always think that is bullshit. Because culture is bullshit if you don't really apply it to your work. And, it's, and, and, and that's true. Like I think it's, it's nothing, nothing is gonna change if you're trying just to escape from your context and your ego, if, if your work is not really like something you can push forward. So it's, it's about challenging what you do, it's about challenging what, where you want to be. So of course we're gonna keep doing things for clients and like helping them with their, their, their brands, their products and their, their stories to, with digital design. But we want as well to start like jumping in, in, in the things that you can touch. We're gonna start like bringing the, the bueno art to, to life in the classic apparel, but at the same time we are pretty active designing some, some products. Like, I'm gonna say it in Icelandic, it's Kotluf. It's like a stool and, and this, as well, Leos, that is like, a, you can see, it's a lamp. That is gonna be soon, very soon, at the Bueno store. And, and that brings me again to this little guy. Because it's that, it's, we have to embrace the future and we have to, to always like remind ourselves that we have to, to, to work hard and, and escape from those norms, those conventions. And making those products, and those like physical products, is kind of bringing it closer to that silly dream because of course we're not gonna be designing the skyscraper, or who knows, but it's gonna be interesting to start designing the things that are, that are in it. And we are looking for people, if you want to join, <laughs> it's a moment. <laughs> <laughs>